packed into a sweaty space, smiling at a stranger waiting eagerly for the bass line to rattle your chest. It's hard to put into words the communal euphoria that clubbing brings, but for some it's more than just a party. Manchester has been at the forefront of important clubbing cultures across the years. It was home to the iconic Hacienda, a club which birthed the Acid House movement and provided a creative hub for clubbers to break free from the outside world through the power of dance. Music brings people together no matter what, even if you come from different backgrounds and everyone, you know, sort of joined in at the same time. Like I said, everyone was like dead happy and mm. it was a really good vibe. It was just, I know it's dead cliche, but everyone was just loved up and loving everybody. That, that's how it was, wasn't it? The club was a unique space that became known for its revolutionary nights, which people used to meet like-minded individuals outside of a struggling political climate. Well, as DJs, we always wanted to be, um, A, a positive experience, because the world outside, especially at the end of the 1980s, was pretty grim. You know, the city was post-industrial. There was higher youth unemployment than had ever been in the history of, of, of the UK economy. So there were no jobs. Uh, the infrastructure of the city was falling apart. Um, and there wasn't much of a sense of community out there. So our ambition was to create a sense of community inside the club. So anyone who was a bit kind of weird or left field or who dressed a bit differently or who uh, liked music that was a bit, uh, a bit way out, they gravitated towards the Hacienda. So it was already attracting artistic people. But when you're at school, a bunch of you all like the same kind of music or the same band, you've got something in common despite your backgrounds. You could all be really different people, but you've got that thing in common. Uh, and certainly I think for in clubbing, that's what it can do as well. You can find your tribe. You can find a bunch of people who, even though you might be from all different places, different backgrounds, you've got something in common that you're passionate about. The club closed in 1997, but its legacy still lives on today. Amid the chaos and drug wars that inhabited the walls, it celebrated everything important about clubbing and changed people's lives and tolerance towards each other forever. People still want to do it, you know, they don't want to let go because it was such an amazing time. time. Yeah, you don't want to let go of that really. Just carry on. Just carry on as long carry as you can. On, yeah. As long as my legs will still keep dancing yeah. in the back, don't give me Keep one foot in the rave. That's what I said. Rave to the grave. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs>
seeing when I was a student. I feel like thanks to social media and kind of a general coming together of the community, there is such a more like visual space for people to feel like they can kind of go out there and do whatever they want to do. And it's not just the same group of guys doing everything. Like Bloom and High Hoops, there are tons of collectives across the city organising events and bringing like-minded people together. But clubbing culture is constantly adapting and changing. So what's next for this movement? I do see there's a lot more being done around, you know, looking out for people in nightlife. Um, a lot more conversations about mental health. Um, you know, there's focus on, you know, people feeling safe in nightlife, diversity of lineups, I think. That seems to be more prevalent now, but again, I don't know if that was talked about as much as it was whenever I started because I wasn't really that involved, but um, it does seem over like the last two or three years that that's a bit, been a big focus um, on a lot of promoters um, and a lot of nightlife, um, which I think is really, really amazing and really important, you know, that people feel safe and people, you know, don't get put off because of how, well, who they are, you know. Clubbing has an intense impact on us as humans. The euphoric feeling that enhances every single sense as we watch our favourite DJ play and unite crowds is rare to find anywhere else. The scene has always given more. From the bands and DJs that fell out of the hacienda to the people using this platform to spread an important message. Clubbing has played an influential role in structuring people's lives even when the party is over. If you're out in a dance music club and you're dancing around, it's pretty normal, good etiquette. If somebody looks like they might need a drink of water, then someone will share the water. Right? So it's about the mundane point, but I think it, those kind of things, interacting with strangers in a positive way, is something we don't actually get that much opportunity to do in our society today anyway. There's, there's a lot in our society which encourages people to think of each other as potential enemies or competitors, to be wary of each other. Um, and in a way, our whole social system is, is based on that competitiveness, you know, and conflict. And, you know, if you can dance together, you can live together. People don't, people learn from all kinds of experience. And there's nothing more uh, convincing than you know, being on a dance floor and and having the best three hours of your week, you know, and even if you're not a particularly, you know, introverted or introspective person, when you leave there, you'd be thinking, well, that felt amazing, and I want to do it again. Our brains change in these intense environments too. The emotional experience of clubbing can directly affect our neurological systems that associate this intense pleasure with the activity. This is a quite an immersive experience, right? You get um, visual, auditory, bodily movement, you're part in a, a, a rich social situation. So it, if I so put somebody in an fMRI scanner and try to look at the brain of what's going on for that person, the brain would be all on fire because essentially your entire system is being stimulated. Um, and I suppose there's a lot of elements of that as experience that are innately pleasurable like dancing or bodily movements and some that are like the smiles of friends uh, the sound of music which we don't know why we respond to with so much pleasure but the sound of specific music would trigger these emotional responses so there's a particular musical rhythms and particular visual rhythms also with these kind of like disco balls or even rhythmic movement of people that you see and when we are exposed to external rhythms like this, what actually happens is that neurons in our auditory cortex and visual cortex uh, get entrained to that rhythm and start firing in that uh, rhythm as well. This would happen in a clubbing environment, but exactly what is the psychological implications of this and how it then works is not really something that's been figured out. It's clear that club culture is a unique escapism that positively impacts the people that inhabit the sweaty walls. They say dancing is a universal language, but communication isn't the only barrier it can break down.